Welcome to another episode of The Silent Saints. In the previous episode, we discussed, can I be holy but not strange? And the reality is, we really shouldn't try to be strange on purpose unless it's necessary for us to be strange uh, in certain situations. Now we're going to talk about how we can proclaim with our word. So evangelization is done through the uh, uh, witness of life, which is what we previously talked about, and now it's the second half of it, which is the proclamation with our mouth. Today we have with us Bridget, Vanessa, Alvin, Russia, and Chris. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, so before the episode, you had an opportunity to ask people a certain question. And that question is, what are some topics people have no problem discussing? They can be anywhere, and it's never an issue to discuss. What did you guys get? What answers? Well, when I asked my friends, um, I talked to a few of them. They, were, they have no issue talking about celebrities. I almost feel like the celebrities are our friends. Um, they're like, oh, did you know so-and-so got married? Or, oh, so-and-so got divorced. I'm like, that, that's nice. I didn't realize they were that close. Like, and so they have no Did they issue text them? Is that what it is? Yeah, hey, right. Yeah, you know, right. A relationship networking <laughs> or whatever. So, yeah, they had no issues talking about celebrities. And, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What else? One big one that I, uh, I was hearing was sports. You know, a lot of big games going on, and people always talk about sports. I'm not one to talk about sports because I don't really watch sports. Mm -hmm. But even when somebody's talking about sports in front of me, I'll act like I'm interested. <laughs> just because I almost don't know how to tell them that I don't watch sports or pay attention to them. So it's almost easy for anybody to talk about sports, even me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Chris, you're a, you're a sports buff, aren't you? I, I like sports. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you talk sports with people, the, is it, is it, does, does it ever become a problem? Not really, because, I mean, even if somebody doesn't really know about sports, uh, it, it becomes a good conversation anyways, because it's, it's still a fun topic to talk about, regardless whether they know about it or not. How about when you're talking about rivals? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different story. Yeah, okay, yeah. so yes. it, does become, yeah. it could become yeah. a little uncomfortable. Right. All right, we just wanted to make sure. What other things have you guys heard? Well, a lot of my friends that I asked said fashion. A lot of uh, trendy things that are out and what they think looks nice or looks good. Even nail polish is something that people mentioned as being really easy to talk about, really fun to talk about. I, I don't think we've ever had sat in a conversation <laughs> that the guys, let me, let's, yeah. what, what nail polish? Are, yeah, but that's interesting. I don't, yeah. Things <laughs> we learn about either. Either. We're right. different, we're right. different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> I used to be one of those, you know, when, when I was single and people would be like, oh, look at the picture of my kids. And I'm like, oh, I don't, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> and now I'm one of those people. Yeah, you are. Yeah, look at, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, you know, look at the picture of my kids. Look what they did today. I mean, how proud do we get when they, were, they you know, they're potty trained. Oh, my goodness, their first was on the toilet. Hey, we throw a party. So, actually... I was telling some people, and I don't know if it's just my friends or, or the people that I talk to, food. Mm -hmm. It was oh, a yeah. big oh, yeah. thing. It oh, was yeah. like people are like, you know, what, what do you have for lunch? What you, would you eat today? Mm -hmm. I didn't know food was a big uh, topic of conversation. I had like mm -hmm. five answers. People are telling me food, food. We just talk about food. Oh, yeah. 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 I had a lot of friends also say current events. So, you know, current foods that are trendy too, but, <laughs> but current events, things that are happening on the news right now, globally, and how, how things are affecting us, all of those things come up in conversation really easily. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, so the topic today is, we're talking about Jesus, we're proclaiming Jesus, but many people feel anxious talking about Jesus. The, Whatever it is, and this is maybe the question to all of us here and, and as you are uh, with us, why do people feel anxious talking about Jesus? Why? Why is it a problem talking about Jesus? I think uh, it's because you're not sure where people fall. Do they believe in Jesus? How much do they believe in Jesus? What level they're at? Um, so it's just an uncomfortable topic because you don't know who believes in what and what they, how far their religion is, and I think it's just an uncomfortable situation. I find it like where sometimes people even feel like annoyed when you bring up Jesus. They're like, oh gosh, like again, like here we go. And 
And so you get a little bit rigid and uncomfortable to talk about Jesus and because you're not really sure, like, you don't want to be that person that, like, everyone's like, here she goes again. And, and it, it makes you uncomfortable. I feel like people would almost be afraid out of fear they don't like to mention Jesus. Like with me, if somebody came up to me and talked, started talking sports, I would just kind of go along with it and say, yeah, I heard about that or... or I knew the game was on or somewhat. But I feel like if I mentioned Jesus to that same person, they would almost, they would almost be like, well, what was this guy talking about? Or they would almost feel like, I feel like they would almost be afraid to learn more. Mm -hmm. So it's like hard for me to kind of explain it because what if, what if it's a friend of mine or a coworker and, and they're just going to go off on me and mm -hmm. that kind of ruined the relationship as opposed to kind of just like slowly growing, you know, into it or allowing them to ask. Like how, how in sports you just, hey, you see the game last night? It's like, hey, did you pray this morning? It's like, you, you almost, <laughs> yeah, right. you you almost, can you imagine yeah. going up to, you know, to, to our friends, hey, did you pray this morning? Uh, what? I, right. I, but it, I feel like it would depend on who you'd be asking. Like if it was someone Catholic, it might be a different situation yeah. versus asking someone that's non-religious, well, did you pray this morning? And I'd be like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> but <laughs> every, you know, right. sports or weather, everybody, I don't know, believes in it, <laughs> you know? You know, it's almost like you're going to mm -hmm. offend somebody by asking yeah. the question, whereas if you were like, did you watch the game? No, I didn't, you know, feel guilty. But if you're like, did you pray? They're like, like, they're like an offended. And we get so careful to offend them when we offend God. But I might be, it might be a really? private thing too. It yeah. could be something more mm -hmm. personal. Like, did right. you pray? Like, I'd be like, that's not your business. What, did you what? watch the game? Yeah, I watched the game. Yeah. But did you pray? I, I mean, you know, it's more right. like personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that question becomes a little bit more loaded mm -hmm. is, is what's the intention behind asking that question is going to be at the forefront yeah. of our minds instead of, you know, it's just a conversation mm -hmm. starter. Like, how's the weather? Or have you seen this that happened on the news the other night mm -hmm. um, and and asking that that prayer question is is something that could have different levels for different people no matter where you are honestly even if you're someone who is very close to God if you were to ask someone you know if you went up and asked your local priest or or nun or someone hey did you pray this morning what would their reaction be like? Right. Like, why are you asking this? What's the point? Right. It's just so socially not done. Not done. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think it's something that people don't expect also. You know, like, if I come up to you and say, hey, did you tie your shoe this morning? You know, you're like, why are you asking me that question? It's something that it's a question that people aren't expecting to get. Like, oh, did you pray this morning? You know, why are we talking about Jesus kind of thing. So, you know, if it's something that's sports related, fashion related, anything like that, people are expecting that kind of, but when it comes to Jesus, I mean, that's the last thing on our minds. But can you imagine going up to, I guess it, it, it's where you are, or maybe the location. If I was to wake up in the morning and then uh, we're getting breakfast, my wife and I, and I would look at her and go, did you pray this morning? You know, like as a, a like I, as if I forgot to pray. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't pray this morning. I didn't, I didn't do my prayers this morning. Did you pray this morning? And if she was to say no, maybe I can jump in and go. You know, let's just let's just pray this morning, or something like this. Maybe it's the location, but it seems to be a personal space thing. Mm -hmm. We have this personal space. Nobody invades a personal space. You just you just don't invade personal space. You know. So, but asking or talking about Jesus is invading somebody's personal space. And, and we just don't do that. It's like somebody coming up to my face and, you know, going, hey, you know, you, what, do you, what, what do you have on? What, you smell like food. That's normal. People have done that to me. I guess that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But it seems like a personal space invasion. Right. Uh, talking about Jesus. So while we're talking about this, because it is difficult to talk about Jesus in general, is it easy to talk about Jesus at work? No. It's no like way. difficulty times a thousand. Right. Okay, so the question becomes, have you ever encountered a situation at work where you did get a chance to talk about Jesus? And, and how? How did it happen? What happened? That, that an, what opportunity came about for you to talk about Jesus at work? 
for me, um, it was during... Well, Vanessa, it's not a problem for you. Yeah. We all know. <laughs> like, I'm just going to just throw it out there. <laughs> Anybody that works with you, you wear a Jesus shirt. Right, right. And I'm like, go Jesus. <laughs> um, but it was actually during a performance review. I had one of my subordinates, um, and I was giving a difficult review. And um, during the review, he was well aware of his performance for the year, and he became very hard on himself and started to talk about... Um, that, you know, this is his weakness and going through his weakness. And so because I know he has uh, like um, some type of religious foundation, I brought up God, like, like I kind of slid it into our conversation. And I was like, you know, but you also have many gifts that God has given you. And it was, you know, in a private room setting. And again, I knew he had a foundation. Um, he was actually Protestant. And, you know, I said, God has given each one of us gifts and focus on your strengths and your gifts. Don't, you know, fall into your weakness and just sit there. And, and it was kind of one of those reviews, but like it, it was a difficult review, but we both walked out there smiling because it was, you know, it almost lifted him up when we talked about God and that he is gifted and he has special gifts. And it, it made my, like, it almost felt like God, I mean, God really was there because he's everywhere, sure. but he was there, like, lifting him up and also taking that burden from me because I was like, oh, God, this is going to be a tough one. And so um, that was just one example of how, I, you know, I brought God into our conversation, and it wasn't typical. I mean, you don't have yeah, this corporate America. You're you, not going to have a room and be don't. like, no. So, yeah, that was my experience. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. That's a really cool experience. I spent a lot of time in retail and uh, and just having different people come in and uh, I remember specifically there was a person who found a $20 bill and walked in and was so excited to spend it that, um, you know, she, she commented on it and she said, you know, this is my free $20 bill and I found it on the ground somewhere. And, and I said, wow, you're, you're pretty lucky. God has blessed you. And she's like, hmm, all right, yeah, okay. And she just kind of <laughs> went with it. And, and it, I just snuck it in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And she, she seemed to appreciate it. And I was thoroughly excited for her. And I think that that's probably why. She, was, she saw my excitement for her that she... She appreciated it. It's nice. Yeah. Just looked it in. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. <laughs> it's, we plugged it in. Right, right. Forgive me. It's the new word. Right. Now we use plug. Right. For those who are watching, I know that. I'm not that old. <laughs> it's just uh, to use the proper word for, for yeah. <laughs> I actually had a really cool experience. I It was a time where um, uh, the Muslim holiday of Ramadan was um, a, happening and I had a patient and she was in the chair and we were going to be doing some dental work on her and she said hold on am I allowed to um, have some dental work and I said oh, I don't know and so she's like no I think I googled it I'm okay and I said okay so we started going on but I noticed a Mary pendant around her neck and I said so I was confused okay and I said so that's a really pretty necklace and she said would you like it and I said no I just you know, it's really beautiful. She said, well, let me tell you the story. And apparently what happened is she had a really difficulty time getting pregnant. And she went to the doctors and they told her that she needed to start, she had some issue and needed to start these um, injections that were super expensive. And she said, so I came out of there and I, I just started bawling. I didn't have the money. And there's a church in front of me. And I said, Mary, please, just you help me. You help me get pregnant. And she said, that month I got pregnant. I didn't use anything, wow. no. Wow. And it was kind of cool that she brought it up. And I and I was confused. I'm like, is she Catholic? Is she not Catholic? Mm -hmm. So she's like, from now on, I just wear this Mary pendant around my neck because she's helped me. Wow. So it was cool that she brought it up, which made me feel comfortable talking about it. That's Very beautiful. nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Beautiful. Well, I work in sales right now. Um, so, you know, sometimes like I'll have customers come in and you know at the end of the sale I'll sometimes close with uh, have a blessed day so the reactions are pretty funny sometimes with that you know sometimes I'll get people that just ignore it and walk away some people will like look at me weird and then some people will like thank you you too you know and once in a while it'll spark up a conversation so uh, it's always pretty interesting on where people stand and you know where they are at but you know it's it's nice you know being able to work in sales and being able to 
have that response sometimes, you know, and being able to say stuff like that at work. Uh, so it's, it's pretty fun sometimes. Something as simple as that, mm -hmm. right? Something as simple as that, yeah. Alvin? It's funny because it's, it's happened to me a lot of times where I did have an opportunity to talk uh, to coworkers at work um, about, about the faith, about any, any faith of that. It works out perfect because the company I work for, uh, in the building, the next door, there was a church. And uh, my company expanded to that next door, so the church, um, they moved to, to a bigger location. And when customers walk in to my work, they notice that we've remodeled, and they, they would say, oh, we didn't even notice it was this big. I would always say, yeah, there was a church next door. You know, I would, I, I would throw a joke in there like, yeah, there was a church next door. We got rid of them. <laughs> and and the, person, the person would laugh, and I would laugh too. I will say, no, I'm just joking. They moved to a bigger and better place, you know, like I'm having for them. And then, I, and then I would mention, no, I'm Catholic myself. And nine times out of ten, the person would tell me their faith. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they'd be Catholic, actually. It's a, it's a pretty Catholic area. And then so just that, like it started off as a joke. We'd both be laughing. And then I'm able to ask them, oh, yeah, so you, you go to church around here? And, and kind of just lead into more questions. It's probably not going to last very long because, you know, people walk in every day and say, oh, yeah, you guys remodeled. It's like, yeah. So, I mean, if they're walking again, they're not going to ask again, so I won't be able to do it. But it's been working pretty good for me right now. Yeah, I'm can, taking advantage of it, too. Can you imagine a second uh, a customer walks in for the second time, we tell the story, and they're like, okay, this guy's up to something. <laughs> right, right. I've heard the story before. Uh -huh. exactly. yeah. um, I actually, uh, every now and then what I do, whenever I'm presenting something at work uh, in meetings, we're usually sitting in a big meeting room. At least there's, you know, 10 to 15, in some cases, 30 chairs in the meeting room. So I always, on purpose, take a chair, uh, empty chair, and I just put it, you know, in the back. Somewhere in the back, behind me, or, you know, I make it kind of noticeable. And every now and then, somebody would ask me, why did you move that chair and put it in the back? And I say, it's, it's personal reasons. I don't think you want to hear it. And they would say, well, no, it's okay. I really want to hear it. And I would say, but it's religious. You don't, and they, suddenly they become really interested. And then I go, I, whenever I come into a meeting, I'd like to, you know, I'd like Jesus to be sitting, so that's his seat. And, and they would, oh, my, and then from there the conversation start. oh, wow, you're religious, you're this. You know, it opens up conversation. Very good, very good. Um, I think we're headed in the right direction. Uh, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about how really we can talk about Jesus in a, in a comfortable way, or maybe in an uncomfortable way. Let's see, because it's going to involve some family, it's going to involve some friends. Stay with us. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about uh, how uncomfortable it is about Jesus at work. Now we're going to talk about how to bring Jesus into the family and talk about family. Guys, I got to ask you, is there an appropriate time or how can we bring Jesus up in our own families? I mean, we see our families often enough, whether it's, uh, you know, the Christers, the Christmas and Easter situation, or whether at events, or whether, how do we bring up Jesus to our family? What would be a way? How do you guys do it? I know in my case, I have not been successful when I brought it up very directly. Um, especially when it comes to, did you go to church this past Sunday? <laughs> that does not go over well. So I've learned my lesson, because they're like, oh, sorry, St. Vanessa. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just, I was just wondering. And it's, it's, I learned for me in my case and in my family situation, it works out best when I just try to be an example. Um, I think it was St. Francis that said, preach the gospel when necessary, use words. And I know it's really, really hard to live by, but I really try to like be an example. And I, and I fail every day, but I get back up and I try to just stay on the path to holiness and try to just do it myself. And that way, hopefully they'll follow along. That's kind of my methodology. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Alvin, what do you think? Okay, I hope my family's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I don't know why, but I'm probably the worst at bringing Jesus up to my family. Only because I do it often, but not in the nicest way. 
I almost, it's almost like a persecution when I'm, when I'm talking to my family. <laughs> and I pray that I find like easier ways to talk about it, but it's always at the worst times. It always happens when I'm having a bad day and me being a sinner, like I let out on my family. So it's just, that's the way it worked out. But they learn a lot about Jesus through most of my good actions and me going to adoration, my little sister comes with me and me going to church every week. Um, my, my family wants to go, my mom, my dad. Um, it's just the retreats I go on and, and adoration and all the different places I go, my family wants to come along, especially my, my younger sisters. And, and it, 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 that's really been the best way that I've, I've been able to, to show them Jesus or teach them about Jesus. Good, good, thank you. I think I have my own kind of battle similar to that, but I think the times that I've, I've been the most successful when talking to my family has been when I share a little tidbit. So, hey, it's so cool, I just learned this about our church's history, or um, if I tell them about one of the saints or something cool that I learned, those little things I think they really appreciate. It's just like me telling a story about one of my friends mm -hmm. and, and something that they can really get behind and understand and it's, and it's really tangible for them. I have family that avoids me. <laughs> I really have family members that avoid me. I mean, it's more like uh, um, we walk in, we say hello, and then, oh, wow, look at that. And then they turn, I mean, I'm not kidding you, <laughs> because somehow they think I'm going to bring up Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. There's this reputation in my family. And, of course, a prophet is never without honor except in his own town, you know, his own house. So it, it, it's, it's always this very strange, and I always have to tiptoe around some people in my family. But of course, we, I, I have a, 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 a several, a couple, a couple aunts that we call nuns. You know, that even though they're married, they have children. We, we say, uh, um, you know, they're, they're just the nuns. So it's easy sometimes to get with them. You know, kind of get with the nuns, the aunts that are, you know, that everybody knows. And uh, we bring up Jesus. Sometimes I just let them. You know, and then of course somebody would ask a question. Well, why does the church say this? And they would turn. Okay, let's ask Bashar. You know, and then it, it, the conversation goes on. I, I love my aunts. Kids are watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a, a little similar with Bridget. You know, like I'll learn something new and like I'll try to go present it like to my family. But a little bit of an opposite reaction. You know, you know some people will go like, all right, man, get away with that. You know, forget about it right now. Like I don't, I don't want to hear it. And, you know, sometimes like I'll talk with my cousins and things like that. And um, with my cousins, they kind of portray me as like, all right, we're going to talk about Jesus right away. Okay, you know, hey, when they call me sometimes like, hey, is it a sin to do this? And I'm like, is this why you called me right now? <laughs> just, yeah, you know, right. just to ask me this question. So uh, it gets a little uncomfortable sometimes. And then sometimes it's really fun, you know, because uh, my family is pretty religious. So like we can sit and have a good conversation sometimes. So it is pretty fun on that end. Well, with me is uh, since we've my family and has had more kids, it's more like, hey, why don't you bring the kids on Sunday to church so they can, you know? So now it's more like, you got to bring the kids to church. It's not for you; it's for the kids. So why don't you bring them? So they obviously have to come along, or hey, I can pick them up if you want. So now they have to go. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like since they've had kids, it's more like, okay, we're gonna take, you know, the kids to church so they can learn. And I think that's been a kind of cool way to get them back into church. Because before the kids, you know, it was more like sleeping in. Now they can't sleep in, so right. might it, as well. It's amazing how we can get, how we can get advocates in, in the family. Because all it takes, especially in the big gatherings, and we have big gatherings with lots of food. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know it keeps coming up. Right. I don't know why that topic always comes up. <laughs> um, if, if we can get advocates in the family... And, uh, you know, I, I have one aunt who's wonderful. I talk, I'm talking about my aunts. I, I love my aunts. Mm. Uh, I have one aunt who's wonderful. She has n no fear bringing Jesus to anybody in the family. And it's almost like the entire family expects it out of her. And, and so at Easter, for, for uh, some time, it was difficult to bring Jesus up. I mean, can you imagine? It's Easter. Mm -hmm. We're all gathering, but everybody's talking about the food and everybody's talking about the sports and all the other topics we're talking about. And, and, you know, until my aunt jumped in, I said, okay, now we're going to pray. And you get that uncomfortable situation. Okay, now it's just, you know, it's only 10 seconds. We're just going to pray and, and let it move on. 
Um, but looking for those advocates, and then little by little, we actually would talk about confession. Confession would come up because she would ask them. I love having those people, those advocates in the family uh, that can help out. You know who one of my favorite advocates are? Kids. Yeah, kids. You teach, you teach the youngest kid to make the sign of the cross, bam, you've got something. You teach the youngest kid or even a group of the little kids to say some of the prayers, bam, you've got something there. And then you're bringing them together with the adults and everyone is coming together. So they feel more comfortable with the kids actually when a kid is doing yeah. an Our Father than mm -hmm. if Bashar was to lead or whoever, me or right. the, everybody else feels more comfortable. Oh, how cute. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So, yeah. It is. It's more comfortable. You're right. For some right. reason. You're right. It's always nice to say, all right, kids, time to pray before the meal. And all the kids gather and, and before you know it, the adults are, are doing it too. Right. Yeah. That's the, right. simplicity, the, the simplicity, the childlike mm -hmm. mentality is, is something to get everyone together. Right. Let the children come to me, as the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, so now the next question is a little bit difficult. And, and to, to a person who's not married, how do you think they bring up, or that, that a married person should bring up Jesus to a spouse? So not every spouse is on the same level, we'll say, but how should Jesus be brought up in a relationship? Um, and, I, and I'm looking for a single people's perspective first, and then maybe we'll talk about the married people's perspective. Uh, you guys have asked several before the show, what did you get? How do, how do you bring it up with spouses? Well, I guess being a, from a single person perspective, um, and I know I've talked to my single friends, like, I love the saints, so I've learned like from my family and my my cousins are like, okay, that's great, you love the saints, but you don't need to tell the guy on the first date every saint that you love, you're gonna freak him out. So lesson learned, note taken. So now I just you know if they ask me like how has your week been and or you know what have you done? Well, I went to church on Sunday. Um, the homily was great. I like bring it in in very subtle ways, but I don't stand it too long. I do it very like slowly and just kind of like 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 leave a little breadcrumbs <laughs> and um that's been my experience um and and friends similar um cases myself especially ones that are pretty um devout catholics they they bring up uh, Jesus in a very subtle way. And, and we've all talked about it. We laughed about the experiences where we like didn't find that balance or we like did like a brain dump on the first date and it was really funny actually. <laughs> um, I look back and laugh now, but so. I do want to come back to this. I, I want more, I want to know more. Like when is an appropriate time? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll ask this question and then we'll come back to the spouses one. When is an appropriate time to bring up Jesus in a, in a beginning of a relationship? Oh gosh, <laughs> it's that's a hard question. It's a hard, hard question. question. And honestly, and it really just depends on how how comfortable you are with that person. And if you're talking about everything, then you're able to say, okay, you know, I have a friend. His name is Jesus, <laughs> and and we hang out a lot. And and this is where some people goes, will receive it. Now. I know. <laughs> check <me. laughs> Sorry. Continue. You know, and well, it becomes one of those things where you have relationships with a lot of different people. The relationship that you have with Jesus is similar, at least for me. I guess I can only own it for myself. The relationship that I have with Jesus is similar to the relationship that I have with some of my friends. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to talk to someone and tell them about the relationships I have with some of my friends, I'm going to also tell him about the relationship I have with Jesus. And that's one of those things that has to go hand in hand in my life. And so I want it to be something that he's aware of. So if I'm telling him that, you know, I spent time with friends over the weekend and some of the things that we did, then I'm also going to tell him about some of my feelings about Jesus. And if he wants to share some of his feelings, and, and it's kind of important to make it so that it's a no pressure sort of thing. When you're talking about your feelings, everyone is entitled to their own feelings. Right. You have your own feelings about Jesus. I have my own feelings about Jesus. You have your own feelings about 
football. I have my own feelings about football, too. <laughs> they could be the same. I, I, so. It might be. And that's what we'll figure out, right? So that's what I'll figure out with him. Right. Um, and I, I probably, like Vanessa was saying, I probably wouldn't bring it up the first time <laughs> we go out. But I, I think that, you know, Jesus is an important person in my life. So the earlier, the better. The earlier, the better. Okay. Yeah. Why, why did you say the earlier the better? Because if he's not friends with Jesus, I don't know if I can be friends with him. It's go. a very right. true there thing. Go. There you go. It's, it's just a level of importance. Yeah. That's right. And we could be friends. I just don't know if we could <laughs> yeah, be yeah. the best of friends. Yeah, like the, the spouse next level. Yeah, the next friends. Yeah, spouse -ish. yeah. I think it's really <laughs> situational also. You know, some people that are going on a first date might already be friends with that person. So they already know some things about them, whether, you know, they already have a relationship with Jesus or not. Um, really, it really falls into like if it's like a blind date or if it's a setup or something like that. And even in those type of situations, if it's a setup, you know, you're going to ask the person setting you up, like, what do they like? What do they like to do? You know, things like that. So a lot of times, you know, if it's such a question so important to you, it's something that you'll ask or anyway. So, I mean, unless the person really doesn't know, it kind of kind of like flows in probably, you know, within the conversation, you know maybe the first hour, maybe the first 10 minutes, maybe the second date, you know, depending on, I think, how naturally it would flow, probably. So, so I think what we're saying is we should feel it out, right? We should, right. We should try to see how things uh, progress. You know, may, <laughs> I hate to say it this way, maybe see if I'm attracted to this person first, right. and if I'm not, maybe use Jesus as a... <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But it is, uh, you know... I, it's it's an important topic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an important topic to do to, to discuss. Yeah. And and the sooner the better, whenever the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. um, I know several people that go into a relationship six months later and they haven't talked about, you know, Jesus or the relationship or how to pray together or things like that. And I always wondered when when is this going to come up. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. One of one of the times I I had asked a couple of my friends about this and. Uh, one of my friends actually said, I'm in this situation right now. Wow. And she said, I, I'm dating this guy and I don't know how to ask. How do you ask that question? Mm -hmm. How do you bring it up? Mm -hmm. And it's a really difficult thing. And it's, it's definitely a feel, feel it out sort of situation. And, um, and she said that she was going to try. I still don't know when or how she went about it. I have a friend who, who uh, went out and, and it was, I think, the third date. Uh, and, and the gentleman asked, where, you know, can I, can I pick you up so you don't have to drive uh, so far of a distance and so on? And she said, yes, I'll be at Adoration at this church um, if you can pick me up at this time. And so it was, it was a little uncomfortable, but it was a kind of like, that he's just picking me up. That's all it is. So I'm just going to see. And, and sure enough, the gentleman before picking her up went inside adoration and, uh, y you know, and they prayed together. And, and that's when the water became a lot easier to swim in because, you know, the conversation it just became very easy at that point in time. And it also sets the tone for the evening. It, it sets the tone for the Starting evening. Starting it with God. Right, right. I, I so know it was always that, that easy. That. Right. <laughs> If it was always that easy. If it was always that easy, you're <laughs> right. right. And we're talking the easy ones, the difficult ones, like I was saying, six months later, and people don't know how to bring up th that, that topic, mm -hmm. right? I think maybe even praying before meal I, while sitting down at dinner on a date mm -hmm. maybe causes the person to go, uh-oh, or hey, yeah. you know, so right. it doesn't hurt. So, okay, that's how, so, so maybe... Married people, there are, there are several people that are married um, and, and they really don't know how to bring it up with spouses. Let's do this. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to look at how, um, how married people can bring up these conversations. Not every, not every couple that are married are on the same level. Mm -hmm. In fact, what happens, what we're seeing is several people uh, are, are spaced apart in terms of the spiritual relationship or the relationship with Jesus. So when we come back, we'll discuss that and much more. We'll see you shortly.
Welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing bringing Jesus into the family and bringing Jesus up on a first date, some very difficult situations. Now let's see how we can bring up Jesus into spouses and how to really bring up Jesus properly. So what do you guys think from talking to people and us being, you know, uh, being in a marriage? How do we bring up Jesus? Not everybody's on the same level. We know several people that are not on the same level. In fact, I hear it all the time, you know, my husband stopped going to church or my husband doesn't go to church as often or my wife doesn't and doesn't pray. How do we bring up Jesus among spouses? What do you guys think? My husband knows, um, you know, from the beginning I went to church every Sunday. So he kind of just started joining me. And then it didn't, I feel bad saying this, but I kind of didn't give him an option. I said, so when do you want to go to church, Saturday or Sunday? It wasn't like, are we going to go to church? When do you want to go to church? They're like, okay, we can go Saturday. You know, I want to sleep in Sunday or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then once we had kids, it was like, we got to take them to church because they have to learn to sit in church and whatnot. So now, even when I don't go or I'm out of town, he will go on his own, which is kind of cool because it didn't happen before. Sorry, not to try to <laughs> throw him <laughs> under the bus, but it didn't, you know. So now it just becomes a ritual. Okay, so what are we going to do this week? Are we going to go Saturday or do we have time Sunday morning, you know? So I kind of don't give him that option. I kind of say, when do you want to do it? Because mm -hmm. we are going to do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Some of the friends that I spoke to that are married, um, they told me a common um, thing. It was prayer. They talked about prayer and the power of prayer. Um, and most of them was women I spoke to with their husbands kind of struggling, not going to church or not praying, and, um, or being too tired to go to church on Sunday morning. So they talked about like persevering and perseverance in prayer and how it really helped the marriage. And I thought it was great because, of course, it's example, but it's also the power of prayer. And it was a common theme with um, my friends that I had talked to and the feedback that they gave me. They're like a lot of prayer. And one, like one of the couple, um, one of my friends, it took a few months. Another one took three years. So... I mean, God's time, but never give up on the prayer. And that's kind of what I got out when I talked to some of my married friends. It was very true. Before we'd go to sleep at night, too, at first when we got married, I'd kind of be like, oh, am I going to pray together? What are we going to do? So I'd just kind of hold his hand, and I'd just start praying. And then a couple of days, I'd be like, do you want to start the prayer? And now that we have kids, I'm like, well, why don't you go put Julia to sleep? And, and we always have to pray with her. So why don't you go put her to sleep and pray with her? So that's how... Prayer is awesome. Mm -hmm. You're right. We actually, my wife and I developed this thing, you know, where, where Jesus says, if two or three gather in my name, I will be in their midst. Mm -hmm. So what we do is every night we open each kid's door and we hold hands and we say a prayer together. And now Jesus comes into that child's room. And so just that small habit that we develop, it helps us with two things. One, to really talk about Jesus after and we say, okay, so what happened today? How about the kids? You know, and then what prayers, you know, can come about from there. It makes it easier to, to bring up church and so on. Where mm -hmm. are we going to church on Sunday? Uh, mm -hmm. It actually really does pave the road, uh, as Absolutely. you guys are saying. Yeah, you're right. I think what I've heard a lot is kind of like what you both were saying, actually. When one of the spouses is already doing something and the other one is kind of peeking and just like, <laughs> okay, like, I'm just sitting here. I might as well join almost kind of. I think a lot of the times, um, in my opinion, a big reason why a guy would um, want to go to church with his wife if she's not forcing him or if she's not, you know, inviting him, if she's just mm -hmm. going, mm -hmm. he'll kind of just say, okay, like, what's she doing at church? Like, I'm going to go with her just to see what she's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, almost kind of, almost to keep, like, tabs on her. You know, just, and then <laughs> little by little, he'll start getting used to it and just start mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is prayer at night, kind of, like, she's praying, she's sitting up praying, and then, like how you did, you know, just take his hand and start praying and it's kind of almost like you said becomes like a ritual right. you know something that they get used to and mm -hmm. and I, I could see that happening in a lot of marriages mm -hmm. yeah. we're making it sound easy I think there are there are some that are uh, very difficult um, but but I think there's there's something about meeting the person where they are so and of course how to bring up Jesus but so if somebody's not at a level I think it would be important uh, to kind of I know some people that have told me they do an exchange. So you come to a football game 
with me or watch a football game with me, I'll come to Mass with you. So I think it always becomes concessions. Yes. You know what I mean? I'll give in and I'm going to show real interest in, in what you're doing and, and kind of use that. Here I am, you mm -hmm. know, I, we've been watching the movies that you like, we've been watching the sports, and, you know, coming with you to these things. And I'm talking as, a, as if a wife was to talk to her husband. And then, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying, uh, come with me, I, I want to invite you to this. Mm -hmm. So even in, in relationships that are, that are uh, uh, so far apart, I think it can be done if it's, it, can, it can happen if it's done in the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that the females are always bringing the males to the church. It's kind of funny. This is a very big topic and at some point in time we hope to bring more of that in. There is this, this sense that uh, uh, spirituality is feminine. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right on that. Mm -hmm. um, we are noticing a lot of this is that spirituality seems to be Feminine it seems to be, oh, she'll, she'll take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. I won't worry about it. A bigger topic, mm -hmm. right. a very good topic, very and, and we hope to talk about it uh, in future episodes. So what do you guys think are some things that people do that are just the wrong way of proclaiming Jesus? I mean, from experience, what have you seen that, that are just people just, okay, that's just the wrong way to proclaim? I've seen it. I've seen it happen to me before I knew Jesus. People would tell me that like I have to go to church or like I have to pray or I have to go to mass. They would keep telling me what I have to do or I, what I must do if I want to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would even say, if you don't do this, you can go to hell or you will go to hell. And it's almost like they, they always told me this, but they never really showed me or told me how mm -hmm. or where to start. So, I mean, I feel like that's, that's a really the, bad way. The attack form. Yeah. Attack form, right. And I've, uh, I've seen myself use it um, a couple times, just, just in, like what I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. when I'm angry that day and then my family does something or says something, and I just, I, I'm in attack mode mm -hmm. right off the bat. And I know it myself, and they know that I know it as well, so. Mm -hmm. I've forget. seen people uh, putting people down all the time for, not doing this and not doing that or doing this and doing that uh some people will oh you don't go to church on sunday and start putting them down and really it, same thing in the attack form pretty much for me i struggled with um i mean from my own experience like you know sometimes if i get defensive and they're like well show me in the bible show me where it says it in the bible that i have to do this and then i'm like mm. and then i want to be like you know and i've done the like you know defense mechanism and i'm like okay now this is not the way god would do this like to show them or be loving and and listen and i've done the part where i didn't want to listen i'm like you're offending me so i get in this like defense mode where my ears just close um, and so I have to be more aware of that and just to be more of a listener. And also, like, I also learned that I had a tendency sometimes to feed somebody a hamburger when they're still drinking milk. And I, it wasn't out of, like, it's just because I saw what they could be. And I get so excited. I'm like, oh, you could be this way. I'm like, e eat the burger, eat uh -huh. the burger. <laughs> Here we are talking about food again. <laughs> but they're like still not, they haven't learned to chew. And um, I have to be patient. And when I'm doing that and, and, and be more aware of that, that people are on different levels and we're all, all on different spiritual journeys. So that's kind of um, my experience. Proclaiming Jesus and, or talking about Jesus to people is very difficult. Oh yeah. I mean, let's be honest here, right? Right. That's so what we're talking about. It's very difficult. It's mm -hmm. not something easy, right? One of one of the hardest things for me to to grasp and then to make sure that comes through when when talking about Jesus is making sure that the people who are saying things and I've had it happen to me where people saying things that should be done like you should go to mass on sunday or you should pray or you need to pray the rosary saying these things to me but then not doing them themselves and being mm -hmm. hypocrites about it right. and so i don't know how the expectation is for me to do one of these things whether it's prayers or attending different things whether it be mass or functions or whatever it is 
and then them not doing it. And so I've made it a point personally that if I'm going to share Jesus with other people, I will definitely be living those things out. So if I'm going to tell anyone to go to Mass, I better be going to Mass. That's first and foremost, I, I can't do the hypocrisy element. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, and actually, it's very difficult in the beginning of spirituality when somebody's entering into spirituality to say, oh, look, you should do this, you mm -hmm. should do this, you should do that, because that's what they learned. This, mm -hmm. is, this is usually the beginning phases. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to do it. I did it to my family members until they, they said, you need to either stop going to church or stop badgering us. Mm -hmm. You know, pick, pick whichever one you want. Uh, and then I realized in, in talking to them is because I would say things and then, you know, on a different note, I would become angry. And, and yell or, or things like that, the normal, right. you know, faults mm -hmm. come out without kind of uh, regard for the spiritual, and they come out, oh, this is the church goer, here we go. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're saying, so right. you're right, it's absolutely wrong. I feel like the funny thing is we do that more towards our family where we lose patience, mm -hmm. but with strangers, we don't do that so much, and we kind of just take a step back, and maybe because you love them so much or whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also find um, judging, I don't like, I don't want to judge, I don't, you might be a sinner. I am a sinner too. It doesn't mean that you're going to hell or whatever because only God can judge and right. God can decide at the end. So you kind of have to just work with them and just show them the right way or not the right way, different ways of looking into things mm -hmm. and they might appreciate it mm -hmm. more. So while we're on that, uh, thank you, Russia, for leading us really into that. Um, if a viewer is watching, and maybe we can end with this, what advice would you give a viewer? Maybe not only on how to proclaim Jesus, but also what to proclaim about Jesus. What has Jesus done for you that can be shared with somebody uh, to, to help somebody see Jesus for who he is? What would you tell them? I mean, I would make sure that I tell them that God is love. And if you show that love, you are showing God. You are that example. I think for me, um, I would tell you, my brothers and sisters, that never give up and be raw and vulnerable. Um, Jesus, sometimes we get intimidated by him, but we have to remember that we were created in his image and likeness, and we are a reflection of him. So we all have weaknesses. So if we just have awareness of our weaknesses and almost sweep our weaknesses and our sins away, the reflection of Jesus will show more and more through you so that you will be able to s spread Christ's love just by being present in his joy because they'll be able to see Christ in you. So that would be my advice. Mine would be something that I learned from experience for myself. Uh, this would go for you or if you're trying to tell somebody around you. Is really, Jesus Christ has been through almost everything that we can go through. Um, he, he's been bullied, he's been beaten, he's been tempted by the devil, he's died, we're all going to die. Um, one thing we are, mm -hmm. one thing I like to tell people is that Jesus Christ will meet you exactly where you're at. I've said it before that you don't have to prepare yourself, you just have to let him know that you want him to meet you and he'll be there. And that's why I like to use the most, is that he, he's not going to hide from you because you smell, he's not going to run away from you because you're a bully. He's not, he, he wants to come towards you, but it's up to us to, to invite him, to open the door. And, and I just know from experience that he will meet you exactly where you're at, no matter where you are. Amen. Russia, what do you think? What would you tell a viewer? Um, so like you guys all said, Jesus is love. He just wants the best for all of us. So just try to be a good person. Try to pray and do what makes you happy and meet people at their level. Don't attack. Um, and just remember how you started. It was baby steps. And sometimes it is just baby steps to get to where you need to be. Beautiful. Thank you. I would say be patient and trust in him. Um, when we want to proclaim, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll want to rush things. We'll try to, you know, go forward so quickly. You know, just be patient and let him do his work. Trust in him and just let him take control. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, we, really, we really want you to see that uh, 
proclaiming Jesus is a very difficult thing to do in some situations. But in some situations, it does become easy. Now, how to proclaim each situation, as, as we've been discussing, is really different. But the key is, as the Lord tells us, as Scripture tells us, is to really approach with, with love, with humility. It's really to care, to really care for the person's soul. Now, because of that, it doesn't mean that we should just take any information and, and uh, throw it all at once. It could be baby steps, as we're saying. It could be little by little. It could be a relationship. Now, when sometimes it's, that opportunity is not available to have a continuous discussion, then maybe it could be simple words or simple actions. Uh, somebody had, had told us one time, you may be the only Bible someone will ever read. You may be the only Jesus someone will ever meet. And so because of that, we are called to a beautiful life with Jesus, but we are also called to share that life with, with Jesus that we have with others. To tell people what Jesus has done for us and, and how He has changed our lives and how He has brought us into a whole new level of happiness uh, is something amazing just to share that experience with somebody. Now there are also higher levels of sharing once those uh, steps are established. So the beginning steps would be of, of how did Jesus change my life. And the, the next steps could be um, how, what is necessary for salvation or how important it is to have a, a relationship with Jesus or what to do in a relationship with Jesus. Now that can be done in several different ways. It could be done uh, through having spiritual guidance, spiritual directors, or it could be done through you. And the way really it can be done is by understanding who Jesus is. So now we're, we're developing this relationship, but now the proper way and what to share. And so this really takes us into next episode's topic and, and the, the next question in our series of questions, the important question, which is where we can know Jesus. And of course, that is the, 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 most, uh, the biggest place would be Scripture. So the question becomes, how can Scripture come to life? And why is Scripture important in my life, in your life? What can we learn from Scripture? Be with us next time as we discuss the scripture, as we discuss Jesus, and more and more and more of this wonderful life that Jesus is calling us to do. Pushi Bishlama and Allahu Mokhun.